Okay, I'll be real with you, standard series Les Pauls, going into this video, I've not had the best experiences with them. In fact, uh, I think I've only had bad experiences with them. Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. This is the Epiphone inspired by Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s. Now I know, it's been a long time since NAMM when it was first announced and the hype around these models were at their maximum. There's a lot of excitement right now about the new Prophecies and the new 59 Tribute in collaboration with the Gibson Custom Shop. So with all the hype around the new new, is this fairly standard, pun intended, staple in the lineup still worth your time? Like it's big and heavy, but at just under a quarter of the price, how close is this to the Gibson version. And just as importantly, because it is this channel, how does it do for metal? Let's take a closer look. And before we get into the review, massive, massive shout out to Boss, who has sponsored today's video. You may have noticed the tones were being generated by the very unassuming Boss Katana. Look at it, it is so cute. It's also an all-in-one rig solution. It's got five different amp types, each with two variations for 10 tonal options, 60 built-in Boss effects, savable presets that can be called up on the fly, MIDI controllable up to 100 watts to power 412, down to 0.5 watts for bedroom use, or you can even just use it with headphones. It's awesome for recording, in fact, you don't even need an interface. All the tones in this video were recorded direct through USB. For 350, it's just a super impressive, super useful piece of gear, and I haven't even covered half of what it has to offer. If that sounds interesting to you, you can find out more information by clicking the link in the description, or I guess you can just click it because it helps out the channel. So yeah, big shout out to Boss, and now let's talk about this Les Paul. Okay, I'll be real with you, standard series Les Pauls, going into this video, I've not had the best experiences with them. In fact, uh, I think I've only had bad experiences with them, which is a real shame because I love Les Pauls, I'm huge into Epiphones, but every Les Paul standard I've tried has been pretty meh. One particular one stands out in school, a buddy of mine had an Ebony standard. The neck was cracked near the headstock, but to be fair, we still managed to track a couple of janky demos with it, and to my knowledge, it's still alive, so fair play. So that particular one had personality, but overall though, in my opinion, they've never looked or felt as impressive as the upper end Epiphone models. That's your artist signatures, your limited runs, like your Björn Galat Jotuns, or your inspired by 1955 Les Paul Customs. So I was really curious about these new 2020 inspired by Gibson Les Paul standards. Because while I was impressed with the custom and the modern, those are kind of like the flagships of the original and modern collections respectively. So lower down from the flagships, what about the middle of the lineup? Well, good news. I think that this is the best Les Paul standard 
Epiphone has ever done. Like, I would pick this over previous years or this year's Les Paul Standard 60s, which, by the way, with Gibson, it's the other way around, and here's why. First, let's dive into specs. Mahogany body, mahogany neck, and an Indian laurel fingerboard, which feels very similar to a smooth piece of rosewood. This model comes in metallic gold, not too sure why they didn't call it gold top, vintage sunburst, and this Heritage Cherry Sunburst. And I guess it's been a while since I played an Epiphone Standard, but I remember back in the day the tops looked quite dull, like quickly painted on, if that makes sense. The veneers didn't have any depth. This one, it still doesn't have the depth you'd find on a $2,500 Gibson Les Paul Standard, and the fade is still kind of abrupt, but I have to say, as a fan of these classic traditional finishes, I still think it looks good. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is the veneer on the back. It's a multi-piece body, so the veneer on the back looks better in theory, like it covers up all the separations, but it's also a different shade of red compared to the side, so it looks a bit odd. But again, uh, it's on the back. But the big factor that makes this guitar for me is the neck. Epiphone necks are kind of weird. The slim tapers have slight D shapes, which can either be a positive or a negative thing, I guess, depending on your taste, but it separates them from the Gibsons. Like personally, it doesn't bother me that much, but I much prefer the rounded C shapes, which is what's found on this Les Paul Standard 50s. Now, I don't know if Epiphone has done these large necks before for the standards, maybe on limited runs, but certainly not as a permanent fixture for the regular standards in the core lineup. So that already makes it closer to the Gibson counterpart than the 60s does, which has that D profile. But regardless how close it is to the Gibson or not, this is just a really satisfying neck to play. It's thick, rock, rock, rock. it's chunky, it's not the first time I've praised this neck shape and it won't be the last. It's also kind of nostalgic for me. My limited edition G400 Custom has this chunky neck shape. And if you want to improve your rhythm chops, uh, pick one of these up and learn some Lamb of God. It works. I could go on and on about this neck. It is really just that satisfying, but you guys have heard me talk about that before. And you've also heard me talk about the upgraded components in this inspired by Gibson line, so I won't spend too much time on this. Great nut in the Graph Tech, Grover tuners, and proper CTS pots are all solid components. It makes these Epiphones less of mod project platforms and more legitimate players right out of the factory, which is really cool. I don't miss looking at Epiphones with the knowledge it was probably a good idea to replace the nut straight away. So while the majority of my feelings are positive, we should talk about the two weaker areas of the Les Paul Standard 50s. The fretwork and subjectively the pickups. This is now the sixth guitar I've tried from the Inspired by Gibson lineup. And in terms of fretwork, this is actually pretty good. They're well crowned, well polished, level, flush with the fingerboard. And you may be like, well, hang on a second. I thought you said weaker areas. And yeah, while I can say the one on this one is great, it's kind of been a mixed bag so far. And I feel obligated to point out that inconsistency. That being said, one great thing about Epiphone is their extensive dealer network that gives you a layer of security that you don't necessarily get if you're ordering a guitar from another country, for example, should you come across any issues. But now let's hear what it sounds like outside of a mix through the katana. <laughs>
Again, I'm not gonna say too much about the Pro Buckers that I haven't said before. If you like them, I'm really happy for you because they're now consistent across Epiphone's lineup. Personally, I don't really get on with them, but to be fair, they're more than usable. Okay, so let's circle back to the questions from the beginning of the video. Is this Les Paul Standard 50s worth your time? If you're like me and love the chunky 50 style Les Pauls, but don't like taking out loans, I'd say definitely yes. At least from a metal perspective, just replace those pickups and you've got a nice chonky riff machine. Now, how close is it actually to the Gibson version? I demoed that one a while back late last year. Obviously, given the price difference, they definitely are not equal. Poly always feels more plasticky and less high end than Nitro. Taking the pickups out because subjectively neither are really my thing, the top still doesn't have the full depth you'd find on a Gibson, and inconsistent fretwork continues to be a slight area of concern, even with these new 2020 models. But luckily, Epiphone has that extensive dealer network that we talked about for any issues, which is a big advantage it has over smaller brands. When it comes down to it though, the GraphTech nut, the proper CTS pots, and the chunky, thick rock, rock, rock. neck shape makes this the best Les Paul standard Epiphone has ever made. The thick what? poly on the neck is still a sticking point, pun fully intended, but in terms of vibe, this is the closest Epiphone has ever come to bringing that core Gibson Les Paul standard experience to the affordable market. Basically, this whole video was, uh, I like it, just not the pickups. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are, of course, just my opinions. I'd love to know what you think, so let me know in the comments. Hit the notification bell if you haven't already, because subscriptions seem to do nothing at this point. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.